time for a quick thing that I like and then some things that I hate. So things that I like today. There's an amazing opinion piece by a person named Blythe Robertson over at the Washington Post. And it is called, I was immersed in hookup culture until COVID forced me into intimacy. And this person, Blythe Robertson, talks about how she is um, a person who gets around, shall we say. Quote, I would never would have consented to having a boyfriend if COVID hadn't forced me. More precisely, I would have had a boyfriend for about three months and then bailed, which is what I was about to do in March 2020. I was 29 and had been dating in New York City for my entire adult life, which had meant, in the best case scenario, going to a man's house once a week, having sex, maybe ordering food, and then going home. It wasn't just that I was particularly attracted to men incapable of emotional, emotional intimacy, though duh. It was also that I and all the young people I knew were immersed in hookup culture, a phrase I hate, but that is also sadly accurate. Before COVID-19, we dated a lot of people at once and took our time before picking just one and settling down. It's what biological anthropologist Helen Fisher describes as slow love, though in my case, I'd never reached the love part. After years of dating this way, I was becoming a guy incapable of emotional intimacy. In my late 20s, I decided I should at least try to call someone uh, to someone my boyfriend, so I picked a guy, and right away, I found the experience mortifying. Who was this person who seemed so hot and fun on the surface, but also made baffling decisions? Who took so long to get ready to go anywhere? Who was inconveniently an entire human being? We were dating long distance. He was in Milwaukee. But in March 2020, I decided I didn't like being so tied to a person outside of me, especially when there were so many other options, so I flew to see him. Then COVID happened. So uh, they stayed together, and apparently this uh, this person enjoyed, you know, actual relationships. And then ended up moving on, of course, because, of course. So this person writes, dating long distance. We'd basically live together anytime we were in the same state. But living together for three days is very different from living together with no endpoint in the middle of a historic period whose defining feature is you can legally hang out only with your housemates. Before my boyfriend, I'd spent the night at a man's home almost exclusively in the case of an unforeseen major weather event. I'd worry, what if my tossing and turning annoys at this guy? What if I fart in my sleep? With my boyfriend, I learned the joys of cuddling without a clock ticking in the back of my mind. I learned how nice it is to spend a morning thinking you're falling for someone, even if those feelings are just the reflected glow of the fact you're eating breakfast, objectively, the best meal of the day. During COVID, I learned that even if I was not constantly thrilling, even if my boyfriend and I were genuinely different in all the ways that originally mortified me, at the end of the day, I just liked spending time with him. And um, then this person says, I was in two more long distance things after that. The first during the Delta variant wave, the second with the guy I messaged on Hinge, Day eight or nine of Omicron. Those relationships are now over, although I still wear a mask on the subway and wash my hand, like now, instead of touching every gross thing in the city and then immediately eating a sandwich. COVID feels over too, but I'm grateful for how quickly I built intimacy with those men. Without the pandemic restrictions, I don't think I would know that after my sweetheart cooks us food, I love doing all his dishes. I decided this actually is feminist. I told each of those three men that I love them. So you know what would be even better? Marriage. I know this is crazy talk. So you constructed an entire sexual revolution around the idea that people would be happier if they hopped in and out of the sack with randos. And then it turns out that women in particular are not particularly happy with that. And when they are forced into isolation with a dude by COVID, they actually quite like it. But because they've been so trained that marriage is bad and that long-term commitment longer than a few months is bad, they break up again. And you end up telling three dudes you love them as opposed to, you know, settling down with one dude. But it is incredible how the sexual revolution is a failure on every single level. And yet the people who promulgated the sexual revolution are totally incapable of seeing it. There are a bunch of Straussian readings that have come up about the Barbie movie, for example. And I'm actually kind of into them. Many of the Straussian readings basically make the argument that the Barbie movie is an argument against feminism because the feminist world presented by Barbie is really quite garbage. The women are actually happier for a brief moment in Kendom than they are in Barbie land. Why? Because Barbie land reflects the glow of second wave feminism. And second wave feminism has been terrible for women. It's made women miserable. Instead of having a balanced life, it's told them to put off the most important parts of their life, namely marriage and childbearing, in favor of the least important parts of their life, namely making partner at a major law firm. And now that women are kind of waking up to it, it's going to take a while for many women to wake up to it because they've so been inculcated in the idea that this is virtue now. The new virtue is rejecting the patriarchy, not actively seeking consonance with the natural law. Rejecting the pay, rejecting all of that, the, the, the search for authenticity. But what they're finding, women, is that what women authentically want is not what they were told by the feminist movement women authentically want. And uh, sooner or later, it's going to dawn on a large number of women that that happens to be the case. And life is going to change. In fact, I think that's already starting to set in. Everyone knows I love my Helix Sleep Mattress. Did you know they just launched their newest, most high-end collection? This would be the Helix Elite. Helix has harnessed years of extensive mattress expertise to bring their customers a truly elevated sleep experience that Helix Elite Collection includes. Six different mattress models, each tailored for specific sleep positions and firmness preferences. I've had my Helix Sleep mattress for six, seven years. It is really fantastic. If you're nervous about buying a mattress online, you don't have to be. Helix has that sleep quiz that matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress. 
Why would you buy a mattress made for somebody else? I took that Helix quiz. I was matched with a firm but breathable mattress. Go to helixsleep.com slash Ben. Take their two minutes. Sleep quiz. Find the perfect mattress for your body and sleep type. Your mattress will come directly to your door, ship for free. Plus, Helix has a 10-year warranty. You can try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it, but you will. Helix has over 12,000 five-star reviews. Their financing options, flexible hand plans, make it so a great night's sleep is never far away for a limited time. Helix is offering up to 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. This is their best offer yet. Hurry on over to helixsleep.com slash Ben with Helix. Better sleep starts right now. In a world filled with uncertainty, it's crucial to be ready for whatever comes your way. Whether it's a natural disaster, a sudden emergency, or unforeseen circumstances, having a reliable food storage system can provide you with peace of mind and the assurance you and your loved ones will be well taken care of. Right now, My Patriot Supply is offering 25% off a three-month food supply to help you stay prepared for anything. Go to preparewithben.com. Grab this special price before it ends. Your three-month emergency food supply provides over 2,000 calories every day for optimal strength and energy in stressful situations. You can enjoy a wide variety of My Patriot Supply and you can customize your supply. They offer an ultimate breakfast kit, a mega protein kit with real meat, even a gluten-free kit, and all of this has a shelf life of 25 years. So again, you're gonna buy the emergency food, you're gonna forget about it, and then there's gonna be an emergency and then you're gonna look in your closet and go, oh yeah, I remember when I bought that. Don't wait for disaster to strike before taking action. That would be a mistake. Invest in your safety and well-being. Secure your food storage today. Go to preparewithben.com. Get 25% off your three-month emergency food supply. Go to preparewithben.com right now. Again, that's preparewithben.com and get 25% off your three-month emergency food supply. Okay, time for a quick thing that I hate. So speaking of things that I hate, So now, because Hollywood has no ideas, uh, Hollywood has decided that the success of the Barbie movie means it is time for a Lena Dunham movie directing Polly Pocket. So we've now done, I mean, we're seeing this all over the place, right? We had the Blackberry movie. We had the Tetris movie. We had the the Hot Cheetos movie. Like We've had a bunch of movies about 80s products. Beanie Babies did a movie. Now we are getting the Polly Pocket movie that is going to be directed by Lena Dunham who is a trash person. I mean, Lena Dunham's, her her book in which she talks about effectively sexually abusing her small sister. Um, it's not great, Bob. Aside from being a promulgator of precisely the worst kinds of, um, of morality that the sexual revolution has to offer in series like Girls, now they're going to have, they're now taking what you can say at, the, at, at its most sort of anodyne is that these are adult directors. Lena Dunham is not a director of children's film. She became famous for the extraordinarily sexually graphic HBO show Girls. And so they're taking her and they are saying, why don't you do the Polly Pocket movie? So I, I suppose they say that um, they're almost ready to go on this, apparently. Mattel execs say that there's already a great script. Um, I, I doubt that because they certainly did not have a great script for Barbie. So they're also going to um, put into development Thomas and Friends, American Girl and Barney. I assume that American Girl will actually be turned into a feminist icon who scorns America and believes that America was founded in 1619. Thomas and Friends will be about a gay train or something. And Barney will be about a purple dinosaur railing against global climate change, which is putting his friends and, and family in danger because people drive cars. I can only imagine this is where they're going with all of this. The Hot Wheels movie, they're doing a Hot Wheels movie that is going to be produced by J.J. Abrams as well. I just want to make sure this is real because it's, it seems so parodic. Um, this is from Variety, but I just want to make sure that this is not actually a parody, okay? Because it's so stupid. The Barney movie will be produced by Daniel Kaluuya. Um, apparently... The, uh, the Mattel executives say it's going to be more like being John Malkovich or adaptation. I'm not kidding. That's what it says in Variety. The Hot Wheels movie will be grounded and gritty. I, I, can't, I, I just can't, I can't believe this is, this is real. I can't, it, it's got to be fake, right? I mean, th- there's no way. There's no way. Ah, uh, like uh, the Thomas and Friends, it, they're, they're saying... Yeah, th- th- this can't be real. It, okay, whatever. It can't. It can't be real. They're saying Thomas and Friends will be directed by Mark Forster of World War Z and Monsters Ball. That can't be real. It's everybody's buying it. So, and it's not April Fools. So, I'm super concerned that uh, either everyone is really gullible or it's real, and I can't tell the difference. And I'll be honest with you, I literally can't tell the difference. 
Okay, I'm just going to let it go because I have no clue. I have no clue. All right, guys, the rest of the show continues right now. You're not going to want to miss it. I'll be speaking with the attorney for Derek Chauvin, who is the man convicted of the killing of George Floyd. If you're not a member, become a member. Use Coach Shapiro at checkout for two months free on all annual plans. Click the link in the description and join us.